If I ever played a game as exceptional as this one, I could die a happy man. This really is something special. Played by Ali Reza Firuzja and Murali Karthikeyan, it was in the Asian Continental 2019. Let's see what happened here. So Ali Reza kicked off with d4, and we quickly headed down this King's Indian line. Ali Reza is of course an expert on this, but here he's playing with the white pieces. So knight c3, bishop g7, white sets up the big center here, black goes d6, and now pawn h3, a trendy sideline in recent times. You delay the development of this knight. There can be some very aggressive intentions with this way of playing. Castles from black, bishop to e3, and now pawn c5 strikes at the center in true hypermodern fashion. Alireza now goes knight to f3, and here a sideline is played. So more usual is taking on d4 immediately, but Murali goes queen to a5. So the e-pawn is immediately under fire because this knight is now pinned, and the most common way to defend against the threat is go bishop to d3 or queen to d2, breaking the pin here. What Ali Reza does is go knight to d2, a very interesting idea because after takes on d4, he goes knight b3, and what he's planning is that after the queen moves away, he'll pick up on d4 and have this nice Moroxy bind position, small edge for white. But this is where Murali unleashes an exceptional move. Of course you can guess it here. He takes on c3 with the queen. What a thunderbolt, and this came to him over the board apparently. This isn't preparation, which you can imagine after this unusual knight d2, b3 maneuver from Ali Reza. So the queen's recaptured. Now he picks up on e3, so he's got two minor pieces for the queen. And Ali Reza already has a tricky decision here. So probably the best way to play here was bishop to d3. You let black take here, the king could recapture, let's say knight c6, rook e1. Black's still going to have nice play on these outpost squares of c5 and d5. Your pawn structure is compromised. You've got four pawn islands here, as we can see, but at least your pieces are a bit more in the game. What Ali Reza does is not compromise his pawn structure like that. He goes pawn to f3, keeping this one defended, but now look at these dark squared holes, and knight h4 is an excellent move. Already looking at those ones, plus black still has this thorn pawn in the white position. So queen c1 played, holds this c3 pawn, which was now attacked, also looks at this one, so bishop h6 defends it, pawn g4 from Ali Reza, he's desperate to kick these minor pieces away, that one drops into f4, and now you can't win the pawn, very simple tactic otherwise, knight g2 check, unleashing the bishop, black is winning in that position. So king d1 was played, coming away from the checks, and Ali Reza is actually giving back the queen here if black wants it. So you could go knight to d3, and you can't now move your queen away anywhere, let's say queen a3, or knight f2 check is deadly, so you would have to take that one with the bishop, but this allows e2 check. The king could take, but then you lose your queen here, the rook could recapture, Black is better in this end game. Materials level, but the better pawn structure is for black. But Murali didn't do this. He's out for blood. So he didn't play knight d3. Instead, he went knight to e6, holding this pawn, playing for more. So we had king c2 now, coming away from e2 check. And this is now no good, or you pick up the unprotected bishop. Even though black takes here, this is good for white. So instead, after king c2, knight c6 was played. h4 from Ali Reza, he's desperate to shut out this bishop. So the bishop came to f4, and now it's protected by the knight. So e2 is a threat, and queen d1 was played to cover that. The knight now came to e5, and one of the big problems here for white is that this pawn is critically weak. So Ali Reza now starts a maneuver with his knight back to c1 and e2, but if he played the most natural move in the position here of knight to d4, then black can simply carry on with bishop to d7. You can't actually take here, or you're running into bishop a4 check, winning the queen. And say you just carry on with king to b2, well then we can go rook to c8 here, targeting this pawn, it's still a very good position for black. 
So Ali Reza, instead of knight d4, he tries this knight c1 move, bishop d7 anyway, pawn a4 covers the bishop a4 check, the rook came to the c file, the knight swung round to e2, Ali Reza would love to take this bishop, so it drops into h6, g5 kicks it again, looks like white is getting somewhere, but then bishop g7 comes, hits another monster diagonal, still big problems for white. And now Ali Reza plays the best move in the position. There's big pressure here. There's big pressure against this pawn, but you have to go active. So he goes bishop to h3 here, giving one of those pawns, bringing this onto an active diagonal. So the knight took on f3. Ali Reza comes up to d3. And although he's running into knight e5, which was played, at least he picks up this monster thorn pawn on e3. He finally reclaims that one after all of this time. But black picks up here. The queen ducks away. Still a huge position for black. Many appealing ways to play. Murali goes for rook to c5, activating that one into the game. And now it's very tough for Ali Reza to actually find good moves. So he brings a rook to the b file here, hits this pawn. It's defended by the bishop like this. This bishop came back to g2, covers the e4 pawn. And now how would you continue as black here? Many good moves, but Murali goes for a really direct one. And before I show you the move, if you're enjoying this video, do hit that like button, let me know, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already and never want to miss a video. So after this bishop g2 move, we had pawn to f5. Just an awesome break in the center, opening up this piece into the game. And basically the pressure here is just huge on the pawn, Ali Reza's forced to capture on f6, and now the bishop recaptures, rook takes was also good, and here Ali Reza just goes rook f1 in desperation, he can barely do a thing, that rook was biting on granite here, but it does walk into bishop takes on c3, opening the attack on the queen. But this is what Ali Reza has planned, so he chops on c5, that pressure around the king was just too huge, the knight recaptures, he takes on f8, king takes, and now he picks up this bishop. Now you don't go with the knight, by the way, which you'd like to do, because then you run into knight e3 check, you pick up the bishop here. So instead he goes with the king, but now these pawns are really, really weak. So the knight retreated, and one of these is about to drop. Black's also already three pawns up for the exchange, so more than enough compensation for that exchange. Black is significantly better. So Ali Reza goes a5, saves the a-pawn, gives the e-pawn, and now Murali gets a bit sloppy, so he should take with the bishop here. After bishop takes, knight takes, the king goes away, knight c5, this position is just rock solid for black, no counterplay here, the knight also covers e6, black can just slowly improve. But what Murali does is take this e-pawn with the knight. Now when the bishop takes, the bishop takes back, it just gives a sniff of counterplay for Ali Reza. So he goes knight d4 here, that one's coming in, it's looking here, it's looking here, and now the best move from black was actually pawn to a6, because after bishop d5, covering e6, which Murali played, now you can go pawn a6. Now Ali Reza missed this unfortunately, but if he had, then black has an uncomfortable question. If you capture, you activate the rook here, if you go b6, then knight b5, hits this pawn. If knight c6 to cover, well then we can check. King g7, rook e1. It's not so easy for black to make progress here. And if you ever go e5, well we can take this d6 pawn soon, or rook d1. Very tricky. But Ali Reza missed this chance of going pawn a6. Instead, he played this knight b5 move, but he got kicked now with a6, and black was able to consolidate. He hit the bishop, it dropped back, and now he gets some checks in, yes, the king came to g7, knight e6, but it finds a hiding place on h6 here. But what can Ali Reza stir up? We know what he's like, especially in these scrambly positions. So rook f8 played, the invasion happens, king h5, rook h8 hit the pawn, it came to h6, and now different ways for Ali Reza to play. He could have tried, say, knight g7 check. He plays this one, nudging up. Black takes here. 
Ali Reza could have captured this one, but he prefers to take here, get rid of one of those connected pass pawns on the king side. The king moved away, now knight d4, the king came to g5, hits the rook, it has to give ground, bishop d5, saved that piece, also looks at e6 once again, and now the rook came to e2, very difficult for Ali Reza to actually drum up play. So king f4, can Murali finish the game off? Rook f2 check, the knight came to f3 blocking, rook e2, and now pawn e5, everything's rock solid in the center, really tough for white, the knight had to give ground, bishop e4, knight e3, pawn d5, Ali Reza march to b4 here, in dreamland he can get down this way, but it's no good because knight d4 centralized, rook e1, king f3, final move of the game, Murali finishes it off. What an immortal queen sack. If you enjoyed this game and want to see another amazing queen sack, click here. Thanks for watching, see you soon.